All right, we're gonna try and wipe these doors off this car. <laughs> the doors held up <laughs> you know they do it in the movies why not try it here <laughs> I think we've pretty well wrapped this car out <laughs> oh maybe we should try maybe we should try and close the doors again the other direction yes <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Alright, that's like opening up my Christmas present. But now I need to sand it. <laughs> and that's like finding out it's full of crap. <laughs> I'm gonna be sanding forever, but. Um... We're only about four hours in, and about 10 hours to go. <laughs> That's a fun job. All right, so my arms are shot. <laughs> Sanding this, I put about a quarter inch of micro bubbles on the whole thing, and then brought it down until the carbon started to show up. I'm gonna leave it at this state. I got a lot more sanding to do to where it's almost all carbon and little micro. But I'm gonna stop here, pull it off, trim the edges, trim the back, put in the hinge line, and just leave this micro to protect it as I throw it around and work on it. So it's time to take it off the plane, but man, it went good. I think my arms grew an eighth of an inch in size sanding that. Back to work. Hello, camera. <laughs> We're almost done. Kind of doing fine tuned body work here. I want to get it as close to perfect before I split it and down the line and put a hinge line in it. But it's really close. All right, we got the machine running. This is the panel. Let me rotate it here a little bit. See it three dimensionally. And uh, the material supplier had a, a panel for us, um, a remnant piece. We were able to buy that a little cheaper, and that was the size of the remnant here I've got in blue. That remnant weighed 68 pounds. And we're cutting it right now. We're gonna walk out and show it to you on the machine. But as I rotate this around, you can see how much we take off of it. When we're done cutting it, this will weigh 2.24 pounds. <laughs> Technology is awesome because we actually know what this is gonna weigh when it comes off with everything already done. So we'll walk out of the machine, I'll show you what this thing looks like being cut. So come check this out. <laughs> this is my favorite part, turning 68 pounds of 6061 aluminum into a frame of a panel. So I'll blow this off for you. Try not to get too wet. You see over there in the back, this whole slab, moves around the cutter just stays in one spot so anyway <laughs> i'm really excited this is i'm getting all wet this is one of the best parts is turning aluminum into a pile of chips and ending up with a two and a quarter pound frame for the wilga so <laughs> i'm excited this is going to go in pretty soon That's a happy picture frame. <laughs> All right, so I gotta do a little polishing and buffing. If you look real close, you can see right here, I got all my nut plates in for my panel inserts. These are for my rivets, my nut plates. I left it not going all the way through so that I could drill the exact size I want, but um, the new Wilga panel. So I'm gonna polish it, sand it, and I'll take it to the anodizer anodize it black and then i've got red panel inserts g3x touch 
Garmin 750 touch, autopilot, G3X touch. This one will play movies. <laughs> all right, so I'm supposed to go to the hospital and get these, all these silly stitches out of my ear. And uh, <laughs> that would take like two or three hours at the minimum between driving and waiting. So I got some uh, tweezers I found and some little fine scissors. And I'm gonna try and yank them out myself. I had a uh, little skin cancer right here. No big deal, we cut it out. So now I gotta get rid of my stitches and then I can get three more hours into building Draco. Well, it's, <laughs> I got one out. It's a good thing I'm starting at the bottom and working up because it keeps bleeding. So if I started at the top and tried to go down, the blood would keep hiding what I'm trying to do. So that was luck, I didn't think about that. But uh, there's number two. I was supposed to cut my ear open again, but. <laughs> yeah. That one's, <laughs> I kind of missed a little and nicked my ear, but it's all right. The blood's clear. Two down, bunch to go. <laughs> awesome. That only took like 10 minutes. I didn't have to drive to the office. I didn't have to get the doctor to pull it out so uh, I'm good to go and it's not bleeding much it's pretty well stopped so 10 minutes in the hangar with a few tools and uh, I got four more hours to work on the Wilga so Draco let's get back to work <laughs> There's step one of sanding. I gotta go four more layers, finer and finer grit. There's the back. You can see the nut plate holes ready to drill out. Once I get all the sanding done, I'll punch the nut plate holes out and uh, anodize it. And then we'll stick it in the plane. Getting close. <laughs> yeah, My last stainless steel rivet I've attached the bottom of this, the new panel in to this down here and it is locked on. So one more to put in and my new panel is done. <laughs> We're done. New avionics panel ready to go. All right, so I'm just about done installing my pressurized plenum. Now, we had to make all these parts, including funny shaped curved parts like this that go right there. And let me tell you what that this is. So I've got an intake on this side, an intake on that side. This is the intake to the turbine. I've got the inlet on the front of the cowling here. That cowling is gonna have a bifurcated duct it's coming in as one inlet. I'm splitting it. I'm going to run it into two giant air filters since this is going to be an off airport aircraft and I don't want to suck weeds and things into it. So I am filtering it. It will go through that filter, giant filter box chamber in a pressurized sealed system up two ducts, one to this side and another duct to the other side. That would be a sealed system. However, just in case I were to fly into ice, which I'm not doing de-ice on this airplane, so I better not be there. <laughs> Neither should you if you're not a de-ice airplane. But let's say I did, or somehow I clogged up that air filter, just a fluke, I got in it. I'm gonna put a spring-loaded relief valve so that if I'm flying, the air is pressurized into this airtight plenum. That holds the air in a pressure zone. But if the front started to clog up with ice on the filtration screen side, I'm gonna have a door that's spring-loaded shut, and if it becomes a suction zone, meaning there's no longer air pressure, the engine will be trying to draw air in, and it will screen door open an alternate air source automatically. That air will pull from the intake warm air of the inside the cowling, and it will draw it in through the back side of my cowling. So the cowling is gonna have a big exit outlet. So I wouldn't be able to make much power, but as a safety factor, it can actually draw air backwards into the alternate, automatic alternate air source in the event that I had a filter clogged for whatever reason. So this is really complex. Um, 
And there's, I think there's like 18 parts I had to make this, to do this plenum. I just finished it up last night. I'm assembling it now. And there's a whole lot more parts I gotta put on the cowling. It's a really big job and uh, I feel like it's gone really fast. So back to work. Change the color so you can see it easier. The blue is our computerized new replica of the wing. And if you rotate it around, go back up to the top, you can see the original flaps. But you can see here, this stripe is one of the rivet joints. Go ahead and let's, uh, I'll go ahead and rotate it to the top of the wing. And you can see the top of the wing, you can see that the areas between the ribs and the, where the metal has flexed in all the parts. It's really amazing. We're within a few thousandths on replicating the wing off a 3D scan. You can even see here's our leading edge slat drawn in there. But now we're gonna draw a new shape of the wing and move the leading edge slat forward. So we're getting there. It takes a lot more time than anyone would think, but we're getting a perfect replica of the wing.